The fantail, or piwakawaka, is one of New Zealand's most iconic and beloved little forest dwellers. But, as we're about to find out, there's more to these guys than just a cute face and a pretty tail. They're also an important indicator species. Let's find out what that means. They're just so inquisitive, like they're just around you, first of all, of course, to feed on every sort of insect that you disturb going through the bush, but also just, I think they're just very curious. The males sort of, when you come too close to their nest and have chicks, they're just really defended and they just come up really close and try to scare you. And I think that's just so cute that they're so small and so bold and brave. If you want to, oh, babies and stuff. Yeah. They're so cute. They're so cute. They're just so caring. They tend to their chicks, I think, once they're fledged for about two weeks. Really? And they really look like adults. It's quite easy to almost mistake them. How do they build a nest like that? Like, it looks like they've sewn it together. Yeah, they sort of just start off at the base and just sort of, I think, take a little moss and then use some spider webs to actually sort of bind it together. How are fantail an indicator species? Within well, New Zealand, you have birds which are sort of at the highest um, step of the, of the food chain. When the birds are doing well, all the other animals in New Zealand are doing well. And so that's why we use them as a monitoring tool, like just like kiwi or any other bird. So if you didn't have fantail in the bush, something would be wrong? Yeah, that's right, you could say that, yeah. It's amazing, like, because the eggs are just so small, so once they hatch on the first day, they're just tiny. Are they? And it's amazing, like, within 12 to 13 days that they're really sort of almost full-grown birds. Only two in there, I thought that there were three. <gasps> oh, look at that. I didn't even see that. By the looks of it, he must have got entangled. Oh. oh, one of your babies. <laughs> Don't film that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to take that home and just sort of discuss it with other people if they say that, that there was predation. Yeah. But not by the looks of it, huh? No, and if it was, surely it would have been lunch, it would have been eaten, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd say so, and like the other two as well, because usually predators just come back if they sort of know that there's food. Yeah, that's quite sad. It is a bit sad. I guess it's just a... I'm a way of life. Fantails do have pretty high mortality, and in fact, the oldest fantail ever recorded was only three years old. What is the project that you're doing all about? It's part of the 10, 1080 experiment that is running at the moment within the Tongariya National Park. We are still trying to establish if that is benefiting um, kiwis and other birds, and by the sounds of it, it is. <laughs> In New Zealand, we pay a lot of attention to the conservation of what is sometimes referred to as our charismatic megafauna, the kākāpō, the tākahe, the kiwi and our other large native birds. But sometimes it can be easy to forget the little things, which is why it's been fantastic to see the work going on to protect our piwaka waka, our favourite local bird. <laughs> Did